So, we have the global financial crisis, the same old monetary game that's beginning to fall through. We have continuing environmental devastation. The climate is getting worse and unstable. The inequality gap of the human condition is continuously increasing. There's a looming global energy crisis once the cheap energy of fossil fuels runs out. And parts of our periodic table of elements are being depleted like there's no end. Unless you are sheltered, oblivious, or uninterested, or are just happy to live in your bubble of bliss, I think we can all agree with that these issues need to be addressed, or we face a certain irreversible destiny which appears bleak and destitute for future generations of humanity. Fundamental change is needed and the outdated ideologies and beliefs, the old ways of doing things, and every single meme or unit of transferable idea that existed in the past needs to be scrutinized and questioned for its relationship to the human condition, the viral and damaging concepts as the profit-driven markets, egocentric culture, materialistic and power greed, infinite industrial growth need to be realized for what they are. So let me share with you an idea called Zemerge, an idea that has the potential to realign ourselves with natural processes for our advancement into a new era of social maturity. The Zemerge project advocates a paradigm shift in social change based on an attempt to combine genetic algorithms and social simulations with the feedback from the environment and individuals to produce a continuous, optimal emerging social schema. In other words, a strive towards social optimality. So what exactly is social optimality? Well, we can all agree on some fundamental directions, like maximizing our happiness and wealth and minimizing the suffering and despair, reaching a social equilibrium for long-term sustainability, achieving the highest degree of freedom, diversity and progress, attaining the highest standard of living of all individuals not only for the current generation but for all future generations. And of course, following the golden rule, do to others what you would like to be done to you. So let's start. What if there was an algorithmic system that could facilitate and steer social change? What if this system was emergent and evolving much the same way life steers towards adaptability, diversity, and sustainability? Let's take a look at an organism. It exists in an ecosystem and is positioned in an ecological niche, the relational position of all species or population in its ecosystem to one another. Of course, this ecological niche changes. New opportunities and challenges arise, the environment changes, energy sources and consumptions change, risks and rewards change. The ecosystem provides environmental stimuli feedback as well as energy to the organism, energy to live and interact with its environment and to reproduce. Thus, a living organism takes in energy and feedback from the ecosystem and in turn reproduces in a recursive manner. So how do these sexually reproducing organisms cope with this ever-changing niche it's occupying? By the following recursive formula, take two parent DNA or recipes, mix them around by adding variation, mutation, and recombination, and you get a new recipe. Each newborn organism, mathematically speaking, in a way, is a new trial run for optimization. This of course includes you and me conceptually, for the ultimate purpose to test how well it will prosper and compete for energy in the continuously changing niche. We then test out the recipe in an organism's niche environment, the trial run. The higher the fitness of an organism to each niche environment, the more likely it will prosper and survive, and hence more likely to pass on its genes. This simple but effective recursive algorithm continues to shape life to an infinite variety of emergence and creativeness molded by the environment. Just look at yourself. So how does this emerge concept work? Here we have a conceptual social model of society that exists in a virtual ecosystem that occupies an instance of a model niche. Just like before, the model niche is not always static, new opportunities and challenges arise, the environment changes, energy sources and consumptions change, risks and rewards change. How does this niche change or gets created in the first place? From the continuous feedback of each individual with a combination of discrete sensors that record real world statistical observations and causalities, or relationships between causes and effect. Individuals in the real world would input their preferences from any aspect of the current state of society. This input would continue to shape the niche. The niche is really a snapshot of what the collective of humanity is asking for in a society, plus the statistical observable information about the real world. 
Each social model contains a specific recipe information stored as social parameters. Each social model is also capable of reproducing with other social models, creating children models. These social models run the same basic recursive formula. Take the parent social parameters, mix them around with variation, mutation, and recombination, and produce children models. Test these children models against the model niche environment. Each newborn model, in a way, is a new trial run to test how well it will prosper in a continuously changing niche. The higher the fitness of the model to each niche environment, the more likely it will survive and prosper, and hence more likely to pass on its model parameters. Thus, the essential driving force of these models is the same as living organisms, to continually improve their own model parameters to meet the niche challenges. This simple but effective recursive algorithm would continue to shape society in an infinite variety of emergence and creativeness. It would be a complete social realignment with nature's processes, literally social evolution. So what are these social parameters? Well, they are the specific traits that make one society model different from another. Traits such as available infrastructure, resource management, state of technology knowledge, ethics morality, and so on. Basically anything that can be parameterized and altered gradually by altering the parameterization values. Just like a person has a gene for green eyes, a society model can have a parameter where the society model uses geothermal power as its main energy source. Thus, social parameters are like the DNA of organisms. So what is a real life example of Zemerge in action? Take an airplane and maglev transportation. Sensors provide feedback to the model niche environment that maglev trains are more efficient than airplane travel. The model niche thus changes to increase the favorability for maglev infrastructure trait while decreasing the trait of favorability for airline travel. Just the same way, advantaged and disadvantaged genes play a role in organisms. What about human feedback? Suppose there are groups of people that really like horse and buggy and magic carpet rides. The sensor information would indicate that horse and buggy travel is quite inefficient, but since we add energy to models that contain this trait, the trait's favorability increases to a certain degree. The magic carpet, on the other hand, stands no chance and remains to be highly damaging trait, as the sensors cannot validate this proposition. It's absurd, thus models with a trait cannot survive. Think of organisms that never get past the zygote stage of development due to lethal gene development. So what's up with these sensors? Well, a sensor is any device that measures a physical quantity and converts it into a signal which can be read by an observer or an instrument. In our case, sensors would capture a combination of three areas. Capture available resource deposits around the globe to know what we have to work with as a society. Capture the usage of resources by the current population in order to optimize usage and availability in a sustainable and maximizing method. And observe the utility and output of various human constructs. In in order to draw the cause and effect statistical information about the environment that we live in and how our artificial society decisions really impact the population, the result would produce a better representing niche environment for the social models to inhabit. An example that's currently in the works would be something similar to the concept of smart dust that would literally take real-time snapshots of the state of the planet, sort of like electronic nerve endings of the planet. Another simpler example that's currently available for commercial use is the onset wireless sensors that monitor various environmental parameters. So again, what about human feedback? Well, this is any feedback on individuals' current state, people collectively deciding what they prefer and dislike in their current social schema. This input can only sway the fitness of a model to a certain degree, as these preferred models get extra energy to exist and reproduce. The model niche landscape based on utility and output has the upper hand. Just like if you were to feed extra rations to your favorite sheep in your livestock, it will add an advantage to its survival, but nature has the final say.